十三回了，换了十回件了，厂里一点说没有，啥都不敢开。这辆车，你说不砸它有毛用？这鸡巴玩意儿！ Red flag, historically China's emblem of automotive luxury, and also President Xi Jinping's vehicle of choice, has faced scrutiny with its 2019 SUV model, the HS5. From transmission leaks to concerns with the engine, air conditioning, onboard computer, and continuous glitches in the electronic stability system (ETS), this model has been a hot topic. One particularly upset owner even went to the lengths of demolishing his car. I can't trust driving this anymore. If not smashing it, what else was I to do? Who would even consider buying a red flag now? Here's the feedback after 3,000 kilometers in the red flag H9. The red flag brand can be summed up as deceptive and misleading. For a hefty 500,000 yuan price tag, I was served an abysmally poor experience. The car seems to exemplify a facade of quality without substance. Issues are rampant. Doctor handles that jam. A navigation system that constantly freezes. Cruise control that won't reboot without a full restart. The heating of the steering wheel is cold on its sides and warm on its top. And bottom. Is this how chauffeurs for our dignitaries drive? Listing out the car's shortcomings could have me talking until tomorrow morning. Pitted as a rival to the Audi A6L, Mercedes E-Class, and BMW 5 Series, this red flag H9 has been thoroughly disappointing. The engine's noise is notably pronounced, especially at low speeds with the air conditioner running. A far cry from the refined hum of an Audi A6 and incomparable to the BMW 530. The front hood is difficult to shut. Doors demand a forceful push to latch properly. And every window seems to need an extra shove. <laughs> It's surprising that a domestic car in the 40,000 to 50,000 range lacks an electric tailgate. The internal aesthetics appear borrowed, with craftsmanship leaving much to be desired. While the start button echoes Mercedes, the air vents take after Jaguar. The UI might be reminiscent of BMW, but the dashboard could belong to a low-end domestic EV. Several buttons and controls feel crudely designed and downright shoddy. Foreign Minister Wang Yi travels in the red flag H7 sedan with a price tag of 300 to 400 thousand yuan. Critics claim it heavily mirrors the older Japanese Crown. Despite a team of 1,000 engineers, five years, and an investment of 6.6 billion yuan, the similarities are hard to ignore. This is the red flag H5, a more budget-friendly option compared to its siblings, the H7 and the H9. Yet it's not without its share of controversies. Some reports suggest its design is noticeably similar to that of the Mazda Tenza. Furthermore, its 2018 commercial appears to echo the vibes of BMW's 2016 M2 advertisement, especially in the engine's roar. In defense, Red Flag stated they intentionally incorporated elements from the Mazda Tenza, given that they adopted the Tenza's chassis technology. They argued that this homage in design is reasonable. Regarding the advertising similarities, Red Flag pinned the responsibility on the advertising agency. Once polished, the H5 looks pretty luxurious, but after only three years, the paint is prone to scratches and the vehicle's internal plastic components look battered. Even a slight tug at the front sun visor can cause the entire shade to come off. While its 1.8 turbo engine offers acceptable performance for everyday driving, there's an evident delay during acceleration. On highways, the car tends to sway subtly. Whispers about the red flag's disappointing after-sales service are circulating. In Changchun, Jilin, a customer at a red flag dealership was told by the lady at the front desk, "Get lost, you mad dog." Multiple owners report malfunctions with a backup camera, but several red flag dealerships claim they couldn't address the issue. Yet their advertisement promise four years or 100,000 kilometers free maintenance and a lifetime of free repairs. The red flag L5, standing as its premier model and the chosen vehicle of President Xi, is often referred to as China's crown jewel. Priced at an imposing 7 million yuan (960,000) and limited to a mere 100 units worldwide, prospective buyers must pass stringent identity and political screenings. Yet, when placed beside the Rolls Royce Phantom, the L5 seems to lag in areas like mechanical prowess, soundproofing, ride comfort, and the intuitiveness of its multimedia system. 
Opening and closing the LL5's doors can be a laborious task, especially since they lack an automatic function. This can occasionally lead to minor slip-ups in grand ceremonial settings. Mechanically, there's a discernible gap between the L5 and the esteemed Phantom. One individual, after test driving the Phantom, remarked, the steering is delightfully soft, and the sleek wheel truly imparts a sense of luxury. Plus, its engine is a beast. A 6.7 turbo machine with a V2L 12, 12 turbocharged engine pushing 571 horsepower. Its acceleration clocks in at around 5.4 seconds, showcasing its immense power. In contrast, driving the red flag L5 feels Quite hefty, both in terms of the vehicle's weight and its steering response. Its sound insulation and ride comfort are notably less refined than that of the Phantom. Moreover, the L5's rear multimedia controls are less than seamless, presenting a rather bland interface. The Phantom, however, shines with its ergonomic brilliance. Every feature is thoughtfully positioned for ease of access. A button on the left reveals a dual screen panel and electric seat adjustments, while to the right, a suite of amenities from climate, control to seat massage functions are effortlessly within reach. In 1957, First Automobile Works, FAW, was commissioned to produce a sedan. Inspired by the French Simca car, they created the CA71 model, which was later dubbed the Dongfeng. However, at its debut, the vehicle encountered a malfunction before its grand entrance. Despite boasting an engine from Cadillac and a chassis from Daimler, most of its components were manually assembled. As it approached the red carpet, the car began to leak oil, its doors failed to close securely, and the trunk unexpectedly sprang open. The eager audience waited from dawn till dusk to see the Dongfeng finally make its appearance. Recognizing the shortcomings of the Dongfeng, a superior red flag sedan was conceived. FAW opted for Chrysler as its design benchmark. By August 1, 1958, the first elite red flag sedan rolled off the production line. Come September 1959, over 30 red flag sedans, accompanied by two parade vehicles, made their way to Beijing, marking the 10th anniversary of the PRC's founding. This legacy continued, and by 1962, the red flag was selected as the official car to host foreign dignitaries. By 1965, FAW initiated production of the more substantial red flag CA770, affectionately dubbed the Big Red Flag. In anticipation of U.S. President Richard Nixon's 1972 visit, FAW fast-tracked the development of a bulletproof red flag model. However, due to technological constraints, the car exhibited excessive instability, giving Nixon car sickness. Further tarnishing its reputation, the vehicle broke down mid-route, forcing them to switch to a standby Mercedes for the remainder of the journey. In 1981, the People's Daily reported that the red flag would stop its sedan production, citing high fuel consumption, but the real issue was subpar manufacturing technology and the overuse of luxury materials, which resulted in FAW incurring losses for every unit produced. The production costs for each red flag car ranged between 60 and 200,000 yuan, but they were sold to the government at just 50,000 yuan each. The more they manufactured, the deeper they plunged into losses. Having produced just slightly over 1,000 units, FAW's finances were heavily strained. It wasn't until the 1984 National Parade, where there was a demand for red flag vehicles, that their production resumed. Throughout the 1980s, red flag frequently altered its car models, from emulating the Nissan 280C to drawing inspiration from the Dodge 600 and then replicating features of the Audi 100 with the CA7220 design. As the 21st century dawned, Red Flag continued to emulate other brands. Both the HQ3 and H7 models, for instance, were largely influenced by the Toyota Crown's design, yet they were priced substantially higher. This strategy severely impacted Red Flag's brand reputation, leading to a drastic sales downturn. Astonishingly, in 2011, FAW Group only managed to sell two Red Flag cars. Between 2012 and 2018, a mere 14,000 Red Flag vehicles were sold, averaging to about 2,333 units annually. The most staggering month was September 2012, where only 19 cars found owners. In 2020, the newly introduced Red Flag H9 and EHS9 came under scrutiny for their striking similarities to the Mercedes-Maybach S-Class and the Rolls-Royce Cullinan, respectively. In response, Red Flag pointed out that their design team included former chief designers from Rolls-Royce, implying that some design overlaps were to be anticipated. Internationally renowned automakers, with decades of continuous innovation and experience, have refined their vehicle designs, upholding a distinct technical legacy and tradition. 
Take Volkswagen, for example. Its third-generation EA888 engine can trace its roots back to the EA113 platform from the 80s and 90s, which further extended to models such as the Jetta, Passat, and Golf GTI. The EA113 engine was developed based on the EA823 from the 1970s. Moreover, the 1980s Santana evolved from Germany's Passat B2. All of this demonstrates Volkswagen's unwavering commitment to technological heritage and pioneering advancements, ensuring the brand's robust evolution. Contrastingly, red flag sedans, which began production in the 1950s driven by political imperatives, largely leaned on imported technologies, foregoing the development of indigenous engines, transmissions, and chassis, ultimately failing to carve out a niche of its own.